Um, Kate, Kate Hills, uh, make it British. Um, we were hearing there from Ben that uh, made in England become a, a real selling point. Do you see things that way? Definitely. I mean, uh, since I've been um, running Make It British for the last seven years, I've seen a huge increase uh, from all sorts of companies looking to reshore production and start making in the UK again. And I think anything that the government can do to draw attention to manufacturing rather than the services sector is fantastic. The problem we've got to overcome is how we attract our young people into the manufacturing sector because at the moment a lot of the manufacturers that I know are actually having to use, use skilled workers from overseas. Okay, so lot, lots that you're sort of bringing in there. Looking particularly at the state of the manufacturing industry in this country and how much support there has been and what specifically you would like to see. There needs to be more support, so this is very much welcome, this, this new strategy. Um, we'd like to see particularly the skills sector, um, the skills address and how we attract people into the industry and more funding and training. How, and that does, how does that get done by the government? Um, it needs funding behind it, without a doubt, and quickly, because we've got a limited amount of time to start training up our own workforce to be able to work in manufacturing. When you see, Kate, what has gone on in the tech industry, yeah. what can you see that could translate? You want it to happen in the manufacturing industry as well. It's, it's almost like the tech industry is exciting, it's new, it's shiny, and manufacturing has been seen as sort of from the Victorian era, and we need to bring some of this exciting thing that's happening in tech also into manufacturing to bring it into the 21st century. And how does that happen? Um, well, for a start, like I said, we need to show people that working in the factory is something to be proud of um, and not something to be ashamed of. How and do you do that? Because that tradition has, has kind of gone. Here. I think it's about, in the media, showing what factories look like in a modern age and modern factories versus people still thinking that they look like possibly Victorian workhouses. You know, so many, um, you hear of teachers telling school children that if you don't work hard at school, you'll end up in a factory. And we, all, we need them to think that it's something to aspire to and to see more about what it's actually like in a factory. Whether that means that you're actually taking school children out on work placements and uh, to, to get into manufacturing and not just into office and service. I jobs. mean, obviously, in the end, if it's if it's if countries sort of um, rely on things being manufactured in their own country, it potentially means things being more expensive. So it then becomes a wider question, doesn't it, about mm. whether actually we're prepared to pay for that or whether we we like the cheap imports. You know, forget the manufacturing industry here. We've all got used to the cheap imports. But the cheap imports will not stay as cheap. Um, for very long. For instance, in the textile industry, people are already predicting that it's going to be a 20 to 30 percent rise in the cost of the clothing that we'll be buying from this autumn onwards because everything in the textile industry, the majority of it is imported. So it won't just be our own goods that it's more expensive. And actually, I think the difference between the, the two will become less. So buying UK product won't be seen as a much more expensive option. Thank you all very much. And uh, let us know your thoughts on that as well. Right, coming up, an English